1 Corinthians, please, chapter 12. I want to talk to you tonight about staying healthy. Anybody interested in health? H-E-A-L-T-H. Now, I've been a pastor for 33 years of this church, and I have seen a lot of people get healed. But I've also seen a lot of people not how to handle a counterattack when the problem tried to come back into their lives. And I, I don't like that. As a pastor, I want to see people healed, and I want to see them stay healed, which means health. And the word H-E-A-L-T-H is a Bible word. You'll find it in the Old Testament. You'll find it in the New Testament. God has provided health for His people. Now, personally, um, I, I like the word health better than the word healing. Because health implies never getting sick. Yeah. Anybody like the word health? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I really like the word healing. But I like the word health better. Unless I'm needing healing or I'm ministering to somebody who's needing healing. But how many of you are interested in staying healthy once you get healed? You know, if, if everything just automatically stuck in our lives after we received it, why would the Lord say, hold fast that which thou hast? Why would he say, hold on to what you've received if it automatically just stayed in your life? There are forces that are going to try to knock good things out of your life that you receive from the Lord. <laughs> The enemy is going to try, just like a football player, they're going to try to get that ball out of the runner's hands, knock it out, get a fumble. The enemy is going to try to knock things out of our life through the circumstances of life, through problems, through challenges. He's going to try to get you to drop what the Lord gave you. And that's why the Bible says, hold on to what He's given you. Don't let it go. Hold fast. Because getting free is one thing. Staying free is another Okay, I'm not going to go there right now because we're going to go to this one in Corinthians here, 1 Corinthians 12. The Bible says in the book of Galatians to Christians, Stand fast in the freedom wherewith Christ has made you free, and don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Can you go back into bondage? You can. You have to be determined not to. You have to have certain things in your life to not slip back into these things that the enemy wants to pull us back into. Say this, I'm going to stay free. I'm going to stay free. Well, if you're going to stay free, you're going to have to know a few things because it's not automatic. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, let's talk about staying healthy. 1 Corinthians 12, look at verse 27. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Paul's teaching all Christians in this verse. He's talking to the church at Corinth, but he's also talking to the church at Grand Junction. And he says, church, speaking to each individual, now, because you're Christians, you are the body of Christ. Believers, we all make up the body of Christ. And members in particular. What does that mean, we are the body of Christ? That means we are a part of Him. Not figuratively, literally, in spirit. We are one spirit, and the Bible says we're one flesh with the Lord. We're one. He's in us, we're in Him. This scripture says you're the body of Christ and members in particular. Question, what part of God's body does God want sick? What part of Jesus, what part of His Son's body does He want sick? Can somebody tell me? Are you a Christian? Yes. Then what are you? A member of the body of Christ. If you're a member of the body of Christ, why in the world would we ever have one thought that maybe God wants me sick? That would mean God wants part of His Son's body sick. How many think God wants Jesus sick? Any part of Him sick? See, a lot of people don't realize it, but it is the will of God that every person on this planet be healed. Not everybody is receiving healing. Not everybody believes it's His will that they be healed. But that's them not receiving, not God not wanting. If you're, a part of the, if you're a Christian, you're a part of Jesus. And now you just have to ask yourself the question, if I'm a part of Jesus and I'm sick, is it God's will that I'm sick? Well, if it's God's will that you're sick, then it's God's will that Jesus is sick. Because you're a part of Jesus. I, I needed to share this right up front because it is the will of God that every Christian is healed and healthy. 
And if you're not, you can be. Hearing things like you're hearing right now will help you to be. God sent His Word to heal them and deliver them. You're hearing Word tonight that can bring healing to your life. But it doesn't work for you just because you're hearing it. You've got to believe it. That's why we don't stop people from saying amen in church. Because a lot of times people, before they even think about it, they go, amen. What they're saying is, I believe it. And believing the Word is what gets your results. Not just hearing it, not just knowing it, but believing it. So it is okay to say amen in Faith Heights Church. <laughs> So I wanted to show you that because you need to know that God wants you healed because you're a part of His Son, Jesus. And of course He wants you healed because you're a part of Jesus. So now do this with me. Go with me to 1 Corinthians 3. And I want to I talk to you tonight, a, a little different angle here. Um, if you're sick tonight, you can be healed immediately in this meeting. Yeah. But it's not according to what God wants, it's according to what do you believe. I mean, you can't even get to heaven without believing. Why would we think we could get healed without believing? If God requires faith to go to heaven, then He's also requiring faith to receive healing that He's provided. But you can be healed immediately. But I want to talk to you tonight about something we don't talk a lot about in Faith Heights Church. And it has to do with staying healthy. I heard the Spirit of God say as I was preparing for this, he said, I, I, I help a lot of people out of sickness, but they don't close the door on things that are causing the sickness, and the sickness comes back. The sickness develops again over time because they're doing things in their lifestyle that's contributing to an open door for diseases to come upon them. But that's not the will of God. He wants us to stay free. And a lot of times, if you want to be healed and stay free, you might have to tweak your lifestyle not just get another prayer prayed for you. Oh, oh. Aren't you glad you came to church tonight instead of stay home and watch TV? Now, everybody wants the result of a changed lifestyle. But not everybody wants to change their lifestyle to get those results. So they say, preacher, pray for me so I can have this. Prayer works. We believe in prayer. But some things aren't going to be fixed unless we make some adjustments in our lifestyle. And the Holy Spirit will help you in this area individually. Expect Him to. He's called the Counselor. Yes. And so look, look I'm going to read this uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And we're talking about staying healthy, but we're also talking about getting healed. But I want to go beyond getting healed. I want you to stay healed. I want you to stay healthy. All right, so look at 1 Corinthians 3. Now, can I ask you a question before we read this? What is your body? Sean, give me a knuckle bump. He, he's, he's a teacher. He knows everything. <laughs> he said, I, I said, what is your body? The Bible says, don't you know that your body is the temple of God? Yeah. And the Spirit of God lives in you. Amen. Now, that's not everybody on the planet. He's talking to people who've accepted Jesus born-again believers. He had to say over and over again, guys, i um, not sure you're getting this because I'm seeing something totally different here. Don't you know what your body is? Your body, you, you know, if you really understand Christianity, you realize that Jesus is not just your Savior, He's your Lord. Yes. Amen. You know, Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> A lot of people want to keep the wheel and just let Jesus stay in the passenger seat. And they want to take Jesus wherever they want to go. No, Jesus being your Savior is one thing, but Jesus being your Lord, that's when life really gets amazing. You know, Rachel was teaching on Sunday. She talked about, you know, um, watch out for offense. And she was talking about how people will go on Facebook and they'll post all these crazy things, these offensive things and their, their hurts and their problems. And they'll start talking bad about other people, acting like Jesus is not even close to being their Lord. You know, if Jesus is your Lord, He should have a say-so about what you post on social media. Yes. If He's your Lord, do you know what Lord means? Somebody who's in control of your life, helping you to make all the right decisions. Yes. How many know Jesus would never 
want you to do something that wasn't absolutely amazing for you and everybody around you. May not be convenient or comfortable at the moment, but in the long run, he would never ask us to do anything that wasn't super good for us and other people. If Jesus is our Lord, how many know if Jesus is your Lord, you don't just say everything you feel like saying? What if you say everything you feel like saying? You are your Lord. What if you post everything you feel like posting on social media? Well, Jesus isn't your Lord. Your feelings are your Lord. And that's when we get in trouble because you can't live by feelings or emotions or thoughts. We got to live by what God says. He, he's been around. Did you notice the Lord's been around longer than us? <laughs> We're like infant infants compared to how long he's been around. And so I wanted to, I wanted to ask you, what is your body? You're, if you're a Christian, if you're a believer, if you've accepted Jesus, if you've accepted him, your body, and we're going to read it here in just a second, your body is the house of God. Hmm. I wonder, since we're the ones responsible for what, you know, we do with these bodies on a daily basis, maybe, maybe <laughs> we should talk to the Lord about what we're doing with our bodies. Maybe he'd like a little bit of say about what we're putting in our bodies. Yes. Oh, no, he's going there. Lock the doors. <laughs> Look at 1 Corinthians 3. Chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Paul again is writing to the church at Corinth here and to us. Now he says, don't you guys know? Because, see, they were, they were living in a way where it looked like they didn't get this. Doing things with their bodies and that maybe you don't know. Maybe you don't realize your body is not your own. <laughs> know you not that, you're, that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Next verse. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Now that's a little drastic and we don't need to get into all that right now, but there's other scriptures in the same book that talk about your, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is the same thing he's saying here. He was talking to the whole body of Christ at Corinth being the temple of God. Then he stalked in other verses about your individual body being a temple of God. Well, let me ask you a question. When you got born again, where'd Jesus go? Inside of you. Right? You let him in. Christ in you, the hope of glory. What does that mean? That means your body is the house he lives in. And actually, your body is the house you live in. Because you are a spirit. You have a soul, mind, will, and emotions, and you live in a body. But the Holy Spirit lives in your spirit, which lives in your body. All right? And so, I remember teaching a while back on um, tattoos and... Um, what was it, Carla? It was um, uh, drinking in the church, tattoos, uh, other things. And I remember the, the only thing the Lord really gave me a piece about to say in that area is, hey, if you're a believer, you've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. And because uh, I'm not for or against. What I am for is people talking to God first about what they want to do to the body he purchased. I mean, think it'd be good just to ask him, Lord. Right. Now, I'm not saying I have to ask him about every little thing, but you might want to ask him about permanently doing something to it yeah. since it is his body. Amen. He bought it with a great price. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about it in this area tonight. So if our bodies are the temple of God, and it says if any man defile the temple, let's just say it this way. It ain't a good idea. <laughs> okay. We can talk about the destroying or whatever later. But how many think it's, it's a, a good idea to be very cautious about doing things to our body that might not be really good for them? Some of you haven't got past the tattoo thing yet. I didn't say tattoos were wrong. I didn't say it's wrong to have a tattoo. I just said, for me personally, I would like to talk to the one who bought my body before I do it. He might say, go ahead, I'll help you design a really cool design or something. I don't know, that's between each individual and the Lord. But the key is realizing this is God's house. Maybe I should ask him about what color I should paint it. <laughs> right? 
And if you haven't done that and you've already got the things done to your body, don't worry. God's not in the condemning business. Just he's not going to hold us accountable for something we didn't know. Sin is not even sin until you know better and then go against. All right. So I want you to do this now. Turn with me to another scripture in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And let me just ask you a couple questions here. What happens if you go against the law of gravity? So many times, what happens if you go against the law of gravity? Let me ask you a question. Can you... Now, we're really big on confessing healing scriptures in our church. I think most people should do it a lot more with a lot more depth. We're really big on rebuking the devil when he comes against us. Because the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. You know, we're, we're really big on praying. We love praying. We love praying for one another. We love praying and asking for things from the Lord that we know is His will. But how many of you think, how many think somebody could get up on a three-story building, jump off and quote scriptures that the Lord is my protector? Do you think they're going to be all right? Why? Quoting scriptures is good. Quoting protection scriptures. Do you think somebody could be at the top of the building and say, Father, I just pray that I won't hurt myself as I jump off this building, how many think their prayer is going to be answered? <laughs> what am I trying to say? Prayer, confessing scriptures, confessing protection scriptures, rebuking the devil, cannot take the place of not jumping off a three-story building, <laughs> violating a natural law. Right? Well, do you know there's dietary laws? Uh-oh. <laughs> Did you know there's physical laws in this area? Our physical body re reacts to some things well, some things not so well, things that are good for it, things that are not good for it. I mean, if we, if we, if we can't just quote scriptures about protection and jump off a three-story building and everything be all right, how, why would we think we could just quote healing scriptures and eat anything we want, live any way we want, sleep as much as we want, and everything's just going to be okay. No, there's some things that rebuking's not going to fix. Say this, all my problems, all my problems are, not the devil. are not the devil. Preach it, Pastor. <laughs> Sometimes we just have to be smart. Hmm? And, and, and realize that there's laws. How about the law of electricity? You know, the law of ohms? Or uh, static? How many know if you go against those laws, quoting scriptures the whole time that I'm protected, you're going to get hurt? <laughs> the guy that touched that live wire one time, the floor was wet. Is that me, Dorsey? What do you think it is? Because this thing's as tight as it can be. The law of electricity. I'll stand here just like this and not move. Right. How's this? <laughs> Where was I? Oh, yeah, so this guy, he, he sees a sign that says, um, don't touch if your feet are in water. And the guy steps in some water and touches things. Zap, he's dead and gone. He... he, he messed with the law of electricity, was being careless, and he, this has happened to people. I mean, we've heard of interesting testimonies from our electrician friends, but, um, so he's gone, and then somebody says, wow, I guess the Lord just took him. It's interesting how fewer people the Lord takes when we obey natural laws. <laughs> it's amazing how many people he doesn't take if we'll just have some sense, you know. No, that's not the Lord taking somebody. That's somebody violating a natural law and getting hurt. Now, the natural law is great. Electricity is wonderful. Right? right? Anybody benefit from electricity? Yes. It's wonderful. But if you go against it, it ain't so wonderful. No. And just because it's a law that God created doesn't mean God killed them. It means somebody operated in the law improperly without respect and they, they died. Well, there's dietary laws. There's other laws that have to do with our physical being. And if we constantly violate those laws, the only remedy is going to be not violate the laws anymore. 
Now, God's merciful. If somebody violated natural laws all their life and they got sick, developed cancer or something in their body because of things they've been eating over time, over a period of time, God will heal them. But he's also going to want you to stay healthy. So there might be some tweaking of some things that we've been giving into so that this doesn't happen again. I remember when John Maxwell had that heart attack, a, a great leader in the, in the Christian world, uh, teaching on leadership. He had a heart attack and he, you know, made it. He survived. And, but after that heart attack, oh my goodness, he changed his diet. He changed his, he, he exercised. He did all these things in the natural, you know, got some things together, right? And he said, after a couple years, he said, now after my heart attack, I'm actually healthier than people who've never had a heart attack because of the certain things I put into place, instead of just doing everything I used to do, I changed my lifestyle. Yeah. And sometimes the Holy Spirit will talk to you about your lifestyle because He loves you so much. I'm not saying you, we're, gonna we're gonna be able to be 100%, you know, die free and preservative free. And I mean, there's stuff floating around the air all the time. You better claim Jesus as your protector, no matter how healthy you eat. Amen. And I want to say this right up front, caution. What I'm going to share with you in the next few minutes, just be cautious. Don't believe that if you're not 100% perfect in this diet area, something bad's going to happen to you. Don't believe that. That's ridiculous. We're never going to get 100% of our ducks in a row in this area. But that doesn't mean the Spirit of God is not going to talk to us about some things that's going to help us tremendously in this area. Um, I remember... Uh, <clears throat> friend of ours, Don Burton, um, he was seeking the Lord, a Rhema graduate and a teacher of the Bible. We did a few meetings with him uh, here in Colorado, actually. And he was t telling us one time about how he had some, some stomach problems that just wouldn't go away. And he knew faith. He knew how to pray the prayer of faith. He knew Mark eleven twenty four. He knew how to pray and believe. And he said, it just wasn't getting any better. I mean, time was going by. The stomach's problems were getting worse. The pain was there. He'd been believing. He rebuked the problem, claimed healing, believed he received, acted on Mark 11, 24, did what Jesus said. No results. And so he decided, you know, I'm just going to talk to the Holy Spirit about this because he's called our counselor. That would be a health counselor too, right? So he said, I'm going to talk. And the Holy Spirit said, listen. <clears throat> all you're praying and all you're believing is great and it's fine. But the reason it's not working in this area is because you're overdosing on orange juice. You need to cut back and for a while cut orange juice out because that's what's hurting your stomach. And all the prayers and all the faith aren't going to help you if you're constantly violating a natural law and overriding something in your body that's not good for your body. So he cut back on the orange juice and his stomach problems went away. Now that's called, that's divine healing in the sense the Holy Spirit revealed that to him. Yes. Cut back on the orange juice and you'll be just fine. Amen. And he was. All right. I want to, I want to share this before I, before I go any further. Um, Kenneth Hagin, now I know some of you don't know who I'm talking about. My spiritual father, who's in heaven now. Kenneth Hagin uh, lived a life of divine healing all the way up to his, to his death. He left after he ate his favorite sandwich and just left the earth. Just wonderful. Um, but he lived in divine health for like 70, 60 plus years, 70 some years. I mean, just divine. Things would come against him, but he, he knew what to do to get him to leave immediately. Um, he hadn't had a headache in decades. And if one tried to come, it, would, it was just gone as soon as it tried to come. He knew how to walk by faith. And he was asked by one of the Ramah singers in band one day after a meeting. And they said, Dad, because they called him Dad. They said, um, if there's anything you could do over in life, what would it be? And Kenneth Hagin, a lot of our spiritual father, man of faith, walked in divine health, taught healing, wrote many books. He said, if I could do one thing over... <clears throat> I would have taken better care of my body naturally. I thought, interesting. Now, he, he knew how to walk in divine health, and he walked in freedom, but he realized, he, he said, I didn't take care of my natural body as good as I could have. 
I thought, wow, that's, that's a revelation. What happens if you go against laws of nutrition? It's not a trick question. Let me give you the answer. You'll experience <laughs> negative results and it won't be the devil. <laughs> right? All right, moving right along. James 5, oh, excuse me, John, the book of John, chapter 5. You don't just want to be healed. You want to stop things from coming back. Huh? Let's say you get healed in a healing meeting from a physical ailment that maybe a lifestyle contributed to. Well, the prayer or the healing will take care of the sickness, but the prayer won't take care of the lifestyle that led up to it. That's something we're going to have to take care of. We're going to have to adjust. Can I get a witness? Now, I've seen people go way too far in this health food area. I've seen people get so paranoid. Matter of fact, I've seen some people who are on the most strictest health food lifestyle develop things in their body like cancer and things like that in spite of all the healthy stuff. Sometimes I wonder if people are eating healthy because they're afraid they're going to get cancer. Now the eating healthy turned into a negative action that actually opened the door to the cancer. How I many know oh, you can do good things in fear and attract bad things? Yes. Job said the thing I greatly feared has come upon me and it did. You know, you could, you could buy a firearm because the Spirit of God led you to, or you just wanted one, you know, just to have one, or you can buy a firearm because you're afraid something bad's going to happen to you. And buying the firearm, the good thing of buying the firearm, is now turned into a negative action that could actually attract bad things happening in your life. You've got to watch out about doing good things because you're afraid of something bad happening. We've heard parents throughout the years, you know, say things like, well, I just, I'd be afraid to send my kids to a public school. I'd be afraid to send, listen, if, if you put your kids in a Christian school because you're afraid, you are now opening the door to something bad happening, even though they're going to a Christian school. It takes prolonged time for things to, you know, to, to start to happen in this bad area, but no, no, no. Put your kids in a Christian school because the Spirit of God led you to do that. Not because fear is pushing you to do that. Any action of fear can start to open the door to things in your life that you don't want. It takes a while a lot of times. It doesn't just happen overnight. Job said the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. He had gotten into great fear for quite a while. So watch out about doing good things because you're afraid of something bad happening if you don't do those good things. Fear is never, fear should never be our leader, our guide, right? So um, look at John 5, and I want you to look at verse 14. He just healed a man of a terrible sickness, and he had a word for this man when he saw him. So Jesus found this guy that he just healed, just totally healed this guy of a terrible condition, Jesus found him in the temple and said unto him, Jesus said to the man that was healed, You are made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto you. What's that all about? What's that all about? Well, it almost sounds like the thing he got healed of was because of some things in his life that shouldn't have been there. How many know just because you have some things in your life that are not good, that led to a problem or a sickness in your life, the Lord still wants you healed from it? I said, if you have something in your body or in your life that's not good because of practices or lifestyle that contributed to that problem, the Lord will still heal you. He did this guy. Jesus healed this man and then he said later when he saw him in the temple, he said, now listen, you're healed. I, I healed you, but listen, I don't want that thing coming back. I don't want these, pro I want you to stay free. So stop doing 
some of the things you've been doing, lest the worst thing come unto you. Will the Lord ever tell us something like this so that the freedom we get from Him is maintained? It's called staying free. Sometimes the Lord has to talk to us about lifestyle if we're going to stay free. Anybody interested in staying free? I is too. If he didn't change his lifestyle, he'd be back in worse shape is what the Lord's saying here. Rebuking the devil can't fix what you need to stop letting in. <coughs> Confessing scriptures can't fix what only taking care of your body can fix. I don't know if you realize this or not, but you are the primary caretaker of your body. God has given you a responsibility to take care of your body. Like I said, you can go off the deep end, get so health conscious that you're actually afraid. Of, if I have one preservative, I'll die. And you probably will. <laughs> if I get one, just one of, those, one of those things with dye number 49 in it or whatever. Don't go crazy on this. But I do think we need to have a little common sense in this area. I got to thinking, why did Jesus never, why, oh, let me say that, it's, not, it's never recorded, as far as I can tell, once in the four gospels where Jesus ever healed one person of cancer. I mean, he's healed paralytics, he healed you know, the blind, he healed the deaf, the dumb, he healed you know, all kinds of uh, withered hand. He, but I don't see him ever healing cancer. I wonder if it's because there wasn't a whole lot of it back in those days. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I, as far as I can tell, I mean, there was no plastic and tie number 40. And I, and I got to thinking, did Jesus ever tell anybody? Now listen, other than the scripture we just read here, we don't know exactly what he meant here, but <laughs> Jesus ever said, listen, you need to stop eating that junk food and you'll be healed or you'll stay healed. Why didn't he ever say to anybody, listen, you're made, you're whole now, but just, if you, just you need to stop eating that junk food. Why, did, why didn't he ever say that? Because there was no junk food. <laughs> there was no junk food. So we've got to deal with something today they didn't have to deal with back then. Oh, rotted food, maybe some poison stuff. But when it comes to all these preservatives and all this stuff, I mean, this, this, is, a, this is a revelation here. You know, really, there's, there's no lack of knowledge. If you, ever, if you ever go to Google and search for things like um, health benefits of such and such or, you know, um, what, how could you get healed of this the natural way instead of drugs or whatever, you're going to find some good stuff. But always look right here Amen. to see what the Spirit of God wants you to look at. Because you'll see some stuff that's just outright false. You'll see some stuff that's good for one person, but it's not good for your makeup. So everything you search on the internet or you search in books, always look to the Holy Spirit to confirm which one is for you, which article is for you. Which, uh, because what's good for you may not be good for me. And what's bad for you may not be bad for me. That's why you got to look to the Lord. The Holy Spirit wants to talk to us about some of these things. And I think people have thought it's not that important. It is important. Do you know Paul told Timothy one time? Timothy had stomach problems in the Bible. Paul told Timothy, Timothy, you got stomach problems there, buddy. Just quote more healing scriptures. Quote more healing scriptures, Timothy. Come on, man, believe God. I'll agree with you. No, he said, Timothy, I'll show it to you. Paul said, Timothy, Quit drinking that water for a while. And use a little wine for your stomach's sake and your often infirmities. Why didn't Paul say, just quote more healing scriptures. Just get somebody else to pray for you. Let's pray. Why, didn't, why didn't Paul say, let's pray? Because some things, a lifestyle adjustment is what's necessary not just another prayer. Let me show you that scripture. You guys got time? 
Look at 1 Timothy 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5, and we're almost done here. Hang in there. <coughs> Anybody have a bathtub at home? Raise your hand if you have a bathtub. And raise your hand if you know what a bathtub is. <laughs> okay. I'm going to get 100% results one way or the other here. <laughs> All right. All right. So, filling the tub with water cannot take the place of plugging the drain. <laughs> That's what we're talking about, right? Yep. Getting healed through prayer can't take the place of stopping what may have contributed to the sickness. Yes. Right? So sometimes in these areas, you just have to listen to the Holy Spirit a little bit closer. So look at 1 Timothy 5 and verse 23. Paul told Timothy a young minister, don't drink any more water. Because back then, water was not like we have today. They had some water back in those days just wasn't fit for drinking. And a little wine is, is, is not talking about starting a, a drinking binge. <laughs> it's talking to, about it like medicine in this verse. Today, we have a lot of other things besides wine that could help your stomach. But don't drink, don't drink no longer water, Timothy, but use a little wine for your stomach's sake in your often infirmities. Now, Paul is the one that preached Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Paul's the one that preached that divine healing belongs to every believer. Why didn't Paul just say, hey, Timothy, just believe God, man. Come on, Christ has redeemed you from this problem. Because if there's something going on that's leading up to the problem, a violation of a natural law or something that's not good for our bodies, how many of you know it's a good thing to not just get healed, but to stop what was causing the sickness in the first place? Some of it's in the area of tempting the Lord. I mean, it's like, it's like Jesus is on the pinnacle of the temple, and the devil said, Jump, Jesus, your angels will hold you up. Jump off the temple. Jump. Your angels will bury you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said, Shut up. Quit tempting the Lord your God. And people are tempting the Lord in some of these areas we're talking about thinking they can eat anything they want and just claim healing. Some of it gets over in the area of tempting the Lord. Well, I'm just going to eat anything I want and claim healing. But there's a scripture that says there was a group of people who had gotten way off course and Paul said their God was their belly. Or we could say appetite. They were more following their desires than what the Lord had. I don't know about you, but when I go out to eat, we try not to be stomach led, even though there's times we're hungry. And Thai food sounds real good. Or Olive Garden sounds real good. Or whatever sounds... But I try not to be led because the Lord knows where the bad food is. He knows where the the cricket that got in the soup. <laughs> How many of you know it's good to be led by the Spirit even if you're really hungry? And he, he made us creatures to enjoy. He wants us to enjoy food, but He doesn't want food to be our God. Actually, it says in the Old Testament that their eating and drinking got into idolatry because they were more excited and thrilled with eating and drinking than the plan of God for their life. And it said the children of Israel sat down to eat and to drink and they rose up to play and it was called idolatry. Yes, God wants, He gave us taste buds. Of course He wants us to taste good food. But He doesn't want us putting those appetites above the leading of the Spirit. Um, if we have a couple minutes before I close, I just got to talk to you guys about praying over your food. A lot of people think it's a little religious thing that we do. You know, I, I, have, I, I know people that get food, food poisoning a lot. Never gotten it and we'll never get it. You know one of the reasons we never get food poisoning? Well, hopefully we're being led by the Spirit to not go where the poison is. But if for some reason we didn't, there's also something else you can do. Even if you did eat something that wasn't good for you. And it's called giving thanks for your food and praying over it and sanctifying it by the Word of God and prayer. I remember I was teaching in healing school a few years ago and the Lord quickened me and said, tell the class that one of the reasons we've walked in the level of divine health we've walked in because we pray over everything we eat, even snacks at times. And I rebuked this problem. It won't ever happen again. <laughs> but if something's leading up to it, we'll fix that too. <laughs> 
Um, are you listening though? Yes. I mean, you've got to pray over your food. Are you kidding me? We don't pray over our food because we're religious little freakos. We pray over our food because Jesus did. Amen. He lifted up the bread and blessed it. We do the same thing he did. Plus, Paul said, every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if. Everybody say if. if. Every creature of God is good for you if. Amen. Every creature of God is good for you if it be received with thanksgiving. That's why we give thanks over our food. For it is sanctified by the Word of God and prayer. I pray over our food. We pray over our food every meal. We don't even care who we're with anymore. We'd, we prayed over food in restaurants before and somebody came up and bought our meal. So I was praying or something thought, well, they'd buy their meal. Listen close again. We'll close in just a minute. Good confessions, which we believe in, can't take the place of wrong things going into your body. Right. Turn to one more scripture in, uh, let's see, go to first, actually go to Exodus 23 and we'll close with that. I believe the Lord said this to me that a lot of people have problems in their bodies because they're not following the leading of the Spirit properly. They're just looking for the leading of the Spirit in the big things. Say this, my appetite, my appetite is, not my God. is not my God. And you can find that in 1 Thessalonians 5 uh, where it talks about, I think it's 1 Thessalonians, where it talks about their God was their belly. Um, Okay, you know what? Um, I've got two minutes, so I'm going to go to one other scripture instead of this one. Go to 1 Timothy. Go back to 1 Timothy, please. And, whoa, okay, let me see if I can find where that's at. I think it's 1 Timothy 4, again. 1 Timothy 4. Exodus 23, 25, where you were going to go, let me tell you what it says. You ready? It says, God will bless your bread and your water and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. You know, a lot of times, bread and water that's not blessed can hurt you. But God said, I will bless your bread. He says this, let me quote the whole scripture. You shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. So there's times when we're praying over our food, I go, Father, thank you for blessing our bread and our drink. And thank you for taking sickness out of our midst. We've been doing this for 30 plus years. Now I believe it's working great. So last scripture, 1 Corinthians, uh, Timothy, 1 Timothy 4. Let's look at this and we'll close. You're really going to like this one. I'm saying that by faith. <laughs> 1 Timothy 4. Anybody ever heard of a little word called exercise? <laughs> Pastor, I thought this was a church service. I thought we were going to talk about angels in heaven. <laughs> These scriptures are in the Bible too. <laughs> Look at this, 1 Timothy chapter 4. I don't know if you're having a good time, but I am. <laughs> so we just read about every creature. Oh, did you see that in verse 4? First Timothy 4, 4, every creature of God is good, nothing to be refused, if. How many want all the stuff you eat to be good for you? Then you need to be receiving it with thanksgiving. For it is set apart by the word of God and prayer. If you put the brethren in remembrance of these things, you shall be a good minister. So I'm a good minister tonight. I'm a good minister. I'm putting you in remembrance of these things. Bounce down now to verse 8. Bodily exercise profits little. I don't know about you, but I'll take all the profit I can get. <laughs> One translation says bodily exercise profits you for, uh, in, in this time, for a little time, in this life. Everybody say bodily exercise is profitable in this life. Now, don't forget the rest of it, but God, living for God is profitable unto all things, having promises in this life and in that which is to come. But say this, bodily exercise, bodily exercise is, good is good for me. 
Why? It's a law. It's a law. Some people go in line with the law. Some people go against the law. And they both get results. It's just one's better and one's not so good. What am I saying in all this? Guys, you know me. I hardly ever teach on things like this. So if you're here tonight, you are supernaturally led to be here because you needed to hear this. <laughs> but seriously, um, I hardly ever teach on, but the Lord made this very clear to me. I have such a heart to see people healed and to stay free. And I believe we need to be a little more sensitive to the leading of the Spirit in these areas. Carl and I are actually going to have our sit-down meetings that we were talking about this a while back. Just going over our whole weekly meal planner again and just talking about certain things. Because eating is something you do on a regular basis. I think that should probably be something you plan out to make sure you're not just throwing whatever into your body. And can I just say this too? Talk to the Lord about what you're putting on your body. Because a lot of things that we use on a daily basis, hairsprays and deodorants and toothpaste, things you use on a daily basis, make sure it's not poison. I mean, let's face it, there's some terrible stuff, then there's some okay stuff, then there's some real good stuff. And I just, you say, well, Pastor, it costs so much. Let me tell you what costs so much. <laughs> okay? A diagnosis that takes you out of your job, sucks all your money, when you could have just bought a $3 tube of toothpaste instead of a $2 tube of toothpaste. I remember when we started buying healthy bread, we're like, we're talking like $4 a loaf. I'm thinking $4 a loaf. And I felt like the Lord said, if you, will, if you will eat healthy so my house can be in good shape, $4 a loaf will not be a problem, son. Just get the good stuff and I'll bring in the money. I'll bring in the extra. I'll bring it. And he has. And we don't just buy it because it's more expensive. We look at the ingredients. I know you can spend all your life looking at ingredients, and that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about that at all. Just be a little more led, and I believe we'll start seeing some results in this area of staying healthy. Would you please stand up?